Hi, welcome back to the DBS Institute YouTube channel. I'm DC Brakes, and in this video, I'm gonna be looking at how we can design classic rave stabs using the granular engine in Faceplant. So let's take a look at this preset I've designed, which I've called Granular Rave Stab. As the name suggests, it's making heavy use of the granular engine within Faceplant, which is a relatively recent addition, but it's very powerful and can lead to some really interesting sound design possibilities. So let's take a listen to the sound. So very much that early 90s Prodigy-esque kind of classic rave stab. It's made up of quite a few different layers, which we'll look at in a moment, but a lot of that is for accomplishing one specific trick. So we'll, we'll kind of come back to that. The processing is uh, fairly simple as well. On lane three, I've just got a limiter, uh, some delay and reverb just to make things sound a little bit more epic. There's this ensemble plugin in lane two, which isn't currently on, but I've just used a macro to control the mix of that, if we want to change the character a little bit. And in lane one, there's a high pass filter. I'll explain what that's doing in just a moment. A transient shaper. So without this, this is a, a pad sample. It has a very kind of pad-like quality, kind of slow attack and the nature of granular, which I'll explain in a moment, also kind of washes it out. So we need to put that attack back in if we want to make that classic rave stab kind of sound. Then we have some harsh for a little bit of stereo effect. And then finally, this snap heap, which is just a preset actually, um, called uh, Shift Cider Grained. And all it's really doing is it's taking the channel, uh, the signal splitting it between the, uh, the wide parts and the mid parts of the stereo signal and it's shifting the wide parts down 12 and the mid parts up 12 semitones and that's creating this kind of uh, tonal uh, pitch stereo effect. And then really the combination of this and the fact that it's granular kind of washes things out a bit so that's the reason why I've stacked in these extra groups. If we look at group uh, two here it's actually just a copy of this but with two important changes. So first of all, I've got this chord function turned on. And when you turn that on, you get this drop down that allows you to choose some different chord types. I've just gone with a minor one for a kind of edgier feel. You can set the range, in which case I've set it to you know, about two octaves. And if we just compare the two, you can hear that's got that kind of minor chord feel. And then when you layer them up together, and also this has a slightly different tuning, this is tuned to 17 semitones as opposed to 12, you just get a thicker chord. So this is kind of providing a brightness and a, and a sort of another layer. And then what I've done is I've just done exactly the same thing. I've created uh, two further groups that are just duplicates, um, but again with different tunings. Sorry, my mouse is playing up a little bit there. So this one's tuned to 21 semitones, this one's just at five, otherwise they're exactly the same and they've both got this chord, uh, minor chord uh, triggering going on as well. And that's really just filling the whole thing out. Um, but in doing that, when I was designing the sound, I felt like it was getting a little bit kind of bright and a little bit thin sounding, a little bit washed out. So I decided to add in a saw wave and a sine wave pitch down to kind of fill things out a little bit. And that brings us back to the non-linear filter that I've put in because that kind of is helping just to tame the bottom end. So without it, you can now hear that sub kind of in there. So we're adding some weight to it and some character. But not really having it like a full uh, bass note. So that's really it. Now, as I said at the beginning, we can use lots of different uh, types of audio sample to recreate this effect quite well. Let's just turn off um, these different layers. In fact, um, I'm gonna delete these actually and just kind of work through the workflow for creating this. So let's try a different sound. Let's come into uh, here, let's grab one of these at random. So again, it doesn't sound great at the moment, but if we duplicate this down, I'm just holding down the option key and dragging this down. Turn on chord. 
Uh, we'll go for minor again. Maybe tune, change the tuning again. Let's go up uh, a fifth. Um, could do the same thing again. Let's duplicate that down. Um, so just again, holding down option to do that. So now we've got our chord, minor chord in there as well. Let's put this down. Now, one of the advantages of duplicating this um, is that it keeps the modulations that I set up on the first group, and you'll see that all of the tunings are now being controlled by this mod wheel. So we can use this to kind of retune it. So if we don't really like the feel of this one, we could try a different tuning. And so that gives you a huge flexibility to try out some different uh, melodic ideas when you're working in this way. So I'd love to know what you think about this technique. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them into the comments below as well. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can be the first to know about new videos when they drop here on the DBS Institute YouTube channel. But that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one.